everyone, this is Kelly. I'm the dyer and owner of Lady Llama Fiber Company. And you're joining me here in my dye studio today at Lady Llama headquarters so that I can show you a technique, and it certainly isn't the only one, but it's the one I usually use to spin a gradient hand spun yarn from a space dyed comb top braid. Now what I mean by space dyed is that when I hand painted this, you can see that there are blocks of color. And when I take it apart, you're gonna be able to see a little bit more clearly how those areas of color were applied when we break them apart, because we wanna go from the green and transition into the purple so that we can spin a gradient. So the first thing that you're gonna do, just like you would any braid like this, you're gonna find the end that it's gonna pull from. And one end isn't going to want to pull. That's okay. That just means it's the other end. It's always one or the other. Okay. So you're just going to take the end of your fiber. And I'm doing this as if it's really for beginner spinners because I had a customer who's just learning how to spindle spin and had some questions for me about spinning a gradient. So I thought showing is better than telling. All right. Now in this hypothetical situation, I'm going to prep this for a two ply yarn. Now, if I wanted to spin a three ply yarn, I would split this lengthwise into three pieces. If I wanted to do a chain plied yarn, I would probably just keep it whole, but I'm going to do a two ply. So what I'm going to do is just find where the comb top naturally wants to sort of split. And I'm going to lengthwise split this into two pieces. You can use a scale if you want to be really picky. You can eyeball it. Whatever your preference is. Okay, so now you can see that I have two piles of the comb top, one for each ply. This one, I'm just going to move out of our way so that we can focus on prepping one ply of fiber at a time. And what I like to do is I like to put them in separate bags so that I don't come back to a project part of the way through maybe and forget what ply I was working on and get interrupted and, you know, kind of lose which ply is which. So now what I'm going to do is find my ends, my dark green ends, and I'm going to just lay this out so that the colors are together. So here's my fold here. And because of the angle of my camera, it might be a little hard to see all of that in one shot, but here you can kind of see that what I did was when I laid out this fiber, I had it folded and I actually had this running lengthwise down the dye table and I dyed the green portion and then I dyed the purple portion and together they meet in the center with this really pretty sort of yellowy greeny little bit of undyed little bit of light purple color i really love those transition colors as a dyer those are the colors that really get me i really really love them so it's really what's easiest for you and what you prefer you could lay this out and just tug it like this i like to go end to end. So I'm going to get one dark green end here and I'm going to find the spot where the dark green kind of becomes this lighter green color and I'm just going to pull it apart. Now 
if you're a beginner spinner, um, you want to make sure that your hands are farther apart than the staple length. And by staple length, I mean the average length of the fiber that you're spinning. This is going to vary on breed and it's going to vary on supplier because it varies by sheep. So, you know, this one's about three and a half to four inches. So I want to make sure to have my hands farther apart than that when I am pulling this comb top apart. Otherwise, it just isn't going to go. So if my hands are too close together, I can tug and tug and tug and it's not going to go anywhere. If I move my hands farther apart than the staple length, then it easily pulls apart. Now this has just a little spot of dark green on the end. Don't worry about that. It's going to be fine. So I've got my, my dark green bit that'll go into my dark green pile. And now I've got my light green. I'm going to go to the point where the dark green kind of becomes this undyed color. And I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. And that's my light green pile. I like making several piles when I'm doing gradient comb top um, or gradient hand spun because I find that having those transition piles really helps the colors blend smoothly. You're going to probably still get some marling or some barber pulling in your finished yarn, but it really just still helps all of that um, visual blending um, occur. So now I've got this part that has a little bit of green on the end and then some undyed and then a little bit of purple. And I have this piece that has all the transition colors in it. And that's going to be my next pile. Okay. So if it has a little purple and a little undyed and a little green, it goes in this pile. And then I have my light purple. So I'm going to find the spot where this turns into dark purple. I'm going to tug. It's going to come apart. That's my light purple pile. And then we're going to do my dark purple pile. And this piece is kind of long because it's where the braid, um, the comb top was folded when I dyed it. So it's a longer piece. You can choose what you want to do with that. You can break it into about the same length as your smallest piece. I tend to leave them long and just spin them as they are. It's also your choice if you want to blend these into bats or rolags after this, or if you want to just spin them as they are. And of course, that prep is going to affect your finished yarn. And that's another video. <laughs> so I have this little bit, this has a little bit of purple, so I want to make sure it goes in that pile and it's up to you how picky you are it's your yarn that's the amazing and wonderful thing about hand spun you get to design your yarn and how much of what colors you want in there so this is another longer piece because it was folded and that's going to go in my dark green pile so you guys get the concept i'm just going to go normal speed here And sometimes I look back through it and I change my mind and I move piles. That's okay too. It's your yarn and nobody can tell you it's wrong because it's yours. I actually did um, this same colorway, which is Fruit of the Vine. This is on my Lyric base, which is Superwash BFL. But it's actually a discontinued base, unfortunately. Um, our supplier no longer carries it, but I took this same colorway on my leaf base, which is Superwash Merino Bamboo Nylon, and I did the same thing, broke it down into its transition parts and, or transition colors, and then I blended it with some Firestar into some gradient bats and spun it up for Tour de Fleece last year, or right before Tour de Fleece last year. And I loved, I loved it. I still have to um, knit something out of it, but I absolutely love the yarn that came out. Okay, so now we have our piles. Dark purple, light purple, 
our transition color that's kind of all of the light tones, light green and dark green. So this is going to be one ply of yarn. And what I'll do is spin, doesn't matter what end I start with, I'll start with the darkest purple and then I will spin through all of the colors. And what a lot of times I will do is even in the dark purples, I'll say, well, you know, this dark purple is really the darkest out of those purples. So maybe I will make another pile that has sort of the medium purples. But again, it depends on how particular you want to be. And you can do this with um, comb top that has smaller areas of color, just the same. You can do it with multiple colorways and blend them together. Um, I have a customer that does that and knits some really lovely fade shawls out of them. And I love, I love seeing those. So this is one ply and I would put this in a separate bag and then I would do the second ply just the same. I will show you that one just for the sake of making sure it all really hits home. So this is my second ply that we split from the first braid. And this one, I think I will go ahead and fold so that all of the green parts are together and all the purple parts are together. And then line them up, just take them apart. I'm going to do one at a time because you can see there's a little bit of twist that's been put into this comb top as I've been playing with it basically. Um, and so that's not going to want to pull apart all in one tug, but if I went through and sort of took out that twist, then, then I could. When you wrap them into the nests, like I, like I just did, you, uh, you end up adding a little bit of twist and you can see all that, that twist in there. And that's going to make it so that they don't want to pull apart. which I did so that it would look pretty, but I didn't really want all that twist hanging out in there. And if you guys like this type of video, let me know. Um, I can try to do more. <laughs> I don't have the, the, best setup for them and certainly when my dye table is in use I actually <laughs> had to break down my dye table I was dying yesterday uh, I had to break down my dye table uh, setup so that I could film this which I don't mind doing but um, I'm gonna try to film another one right after this that I know uh, people have been asking for for a little while that's gonna show um, winding a center pull ball on our nitty nasties for how I do it. Um, that's been a quite a requested video. So look forward to that because I'm going to film it right after this now that I have everything set up. All right. So I got all of that twist out. That was took an unnecessary amount of time, but that's okay. It's really snowy here today in central New York in Ithaca and Everything's closed down and it's really quiet. So what else are you going to do, right? All right, so I have this all folded out so that the colors are together. And I'm just going to make sure these roughly line up. And I'm going to do like half. Okay. And second half. So that's like a faster way to do it. Um, but then you still want to go, well, maybe you don't want to go through and, and, uh, separate out these colors, but I do, so I'm going to, but if you don't, that's okay. I take a very, like, Bob Ross approach to hand spun. If it makes you happy, then do it, because it's your yarn.
Oh, and I mentioned Tour de Fleece. We are going to be doing a Tour de Fleece team again for Lady Llama and Misha Knits this year. So if you aren't in our Ravelry group, and even if you aren't doing Tour de Fleece, check out our Ravelry group because we're doing a make-along right now. And you can come and hang out with us and check out our spring make-along and there are prizes and we have a lot of fun. It's very casual make-along. All of our, our make-alongs are pretty casual because Misha and I are both very busy people and I'm not going to spend a bunch of energy policing people about entries and stuff like that. We just have fun and share what we're working on and chat and then there are random prize giveaways. So if you want to, to check that out, go to our Ravelry group, which is Lady Llama Fiber Co. with Misha Nets. And we're pretty much always doing make-alongs there. We kind of like to start one as soon as we end one because we really enjoy doing them. And also, we have our mystery boxes that we do on the solstices and the equinoxes. And the spring equinox box is available for pre-order right now. And that one's a yarn box, but the summer solstice box is going to be a spinning box. So keep your eye out for that if you are interested in a spinning box. Okay, so now I have my dark purple, my medium purple, light purple, transition pile, light green, dark green, and I may split those greens into a medium and a dark green later on when I spin this. But there you have it. And that's basically how I split apart a space dyed comb top to prep for spinning a gradient yarn. And then what I would do is just spin both plies and then ply them together and voila. If you guys have any questions, let me know and thanks for watching.